Hello everyone, welcome to this 20 minute uh, module, class if you like, designed to help you wind down from your day. For we'll start standing up, you can tag this with the previous um, neck and shoulder release, this afterwards would come in very nicely, but if you've only got 20 minutes and you fancy having um, just a, a, a quick session that will help you wind down and you can go ahead and do this one. Let's start standing weight evenly spread onto the feet, big toe, little toe, inner heel, outer heel. Close our eyes and take five centering breaths. And the crown of the head up towards the ceiling, the weight evenly spread out between the feet, the front of the body relaxed, the back of the body relaxed. Consciously relax those areas that may be a little bit tight such as the neck, the belly, the buttocks, At the end of your next exhale, open your eyes. And we're going to inhale, lift the arms, palms down halfway, lift the palms all the way overhead. Exhale, palms up to halfway, shoulder height, release the arms, palms down. Let's repeat this twice. Inhale. Exhale. Once more. Good. From this, we're going to very gently bend the knees. Actually, I'm going to stand on the side. And here, as we inhale, lift the arms. And then as we exhale, we're going to turn over towards the right. Keep the hips facing forward, but twist in the body. Inhale back up through towards the center, this time exhale over towards the left side. Inhale up, exhale right. Inhale up, exhale left. Once more. Back through towards the center, release the arms out, straighten the legs. Take the hands to the hips, the weight onto the left leg, and then you're going to take the right leg up. And then from this, you're going to either take some hip rotations, taking some circles, or if you're confident with taking the figure of eight in one direction, and then whether you're circling a figure of eight, you're going to do this in the other direction. And release. Over to the other side, so stand, on, stand onto your right leg, lift the left leg, and again, either taking some circles, or those figure of eight in one direction. Make the rotations as little or as big as you wish. Change direction. And release. Again, lift the arms up. This time the palms are facing towards one another. Press those feet down, reach towards the right wrist with the left arm and take a, a little side bend here for a breath. Back through towards the center, relax the shoulders, change hands over to the other side. Good, inhale back through towards the center, release the arms out and down. Bend the knees, take the weight onto the right leg. If you can, you're going to take the left leg and take it across the thigh. And then here, hands to the thighs, bring yourself forward a little bit so you may feel a bit of a stretch onto the buttocks and the hip. Try to keep the back long. 
Inhale, arms up, exhale, arms down and leg down. Over to the other side, so we're going to bend the knee, take the shin out, hands to the thighs, so that we can push them back and then lengthen the spine forward, get an outer hip stretch. Inhale, arms up, exhale, hands down, leg down. Good, from this we're going to inhale, arms up, exhale, hinge forward and down. Release yourself, folding over so you may want to have your, your record hand if you want, or your book. And then you can dangle here, just noticing the back of the legs. You may want to take the legs wide or you could be a lot higher up if you wish for your back. So you may want to keep a long spine rather than a folded spine, depending on how you feel in your back. Either way, focus on the stretch that is happening into the back of the legs. Then we're going to bend the knees, release the support, or take the hands to the floor a little bit in front of you. You're going to um, walk towards the top of the mat, then release the right leg back and then take the right knee down to the floor. Have the hands to either side of the front leg. Here it might be nice at the end of a day where you might have been at your computer if you're working from home quite a lot or if you've been sat, to have a little bit more support so you can allow the back hip to come in. And we'll take three breaths here. to the floor or to your brick, tuck the back foot, come back with the back leg in, fall forward, then let's do the other side, so you take the other leg back, I apologise, I think my left and right are all confused so far tonight, but you always do one side and then the other. So again here, position yourself so that you are comfortable, and take three breaths. you're going to take the back foot, take it and we'll lift the back knee, leave your bricks or blocks to the side, take the hands to either side of the front leg, take the front leg back into a down dog. Alternatively you stay onto your hands and knees here but if you're into the down dog you are pressing the hands down into the floor with the sitting bones lifted up towards the ceiling and you are really allowing the head to be dangling down. If you want to, you can sway the hips from side to side, get a little bit more of a side bend, a stretch into the side of the body. You can even start to release the heels a little bit more down towards the floor too. See how it feels. Come up onto the toes, back to your hands and knees, slide the hands forward, allow yourself to come all the way down into your fronts. And then having the elbows under the shoulders or even further forward, certainly wide enough so that you can release yourself into a sphinx. So imagine, I always think of this as being like a little bit of a, of a zombie move. So you have the forearms down to the floor, and you take the elbows close to your um, to your body, to your torso. So I'm saying zombie is if you have no legs and you're trying to sort of bring yourself forward. So here it's tractioning the elbows back in towards the chest so that you can allow the heart to melt forward, keeping the belly button towards the spine and feeling that openness into the back. and then allow the elbows to come out to the side. You slide the hands to the side of the chest and then you come back down, knees to the front. You can keep the knees together or separate them out to come into your child's posture.
And at the end of your next exhale, take the hands forward, lift the head, come back into the hands and knees. You may still want a support here at some point. Look towards the right knee, bring the right knee behind the right wrist. Tuck the back foot, lift the knee and then stretch it back. Here, we're going to take the hands to the outside of the front knee and try to lift our chest a little bit. This is a, a variation of pigeon. Now for some people this is not comfortable to be bearing weight in those knees this way, in which case you would essentially come onto your back and then take this posture here where you cross the shin across the other thigh and then you keep that leg lifted. Otherwise, if you're still happy to be into um, a pigeon, here we're going to fold forward. Make sure there's no discomfort in the knee. And for the purpose of tonight's practice, um, I'm not so bothered about how forward the front leg goes. I'm thinking more into stretching into the front of the body and then allowing ourselves to fold in here. Again, if it's not comfortable for you to fold forward, then you can keep upright. Simply allow the head to be released between the shoulders. You're going to release yourself back up. Tuck the back foot, bring the knee back to be more or less under the hip. Bring the right knee behind the, or sorry, underneath the right hip. And then we change sides and I'll show you if you need a little bit of support on this side how to use the, the brick here. Left knee behind the left wrist. I'm keeping my heel in line with my right groin because as I tuck the back foot and lengthen the right leg essentially my heel reaches towards the right side and I can get a, a little bit of a massage here. Because I'd rather keep my hips um, parallel. I don't want to roll over onto the side so here I could have a block or a brick to help keep myself up and again I'm going to look to lifting my chest and then eventually folding forward if you can if you want. Lift back up, hands to the front, release the block of the brick, tuck the back foot, bring the back knee under uh, the back hip more or less, take the other knee back. This time, slide the legs out to the side, come to being seated on your bottom. Using props or not, you're going to take the right knee in towards the chest and then open the right knee out. If the knee is quite a way away from the floor then you might find it helpful to have your, your brick underneath there. Take your weight onto your right buttock, take the hand behind the left thigh and then release the flesh so that you're tilting your pelvic, your bones, sorry, your sitting bones forward. Turn the belly towards that extended leg, hands to either side, lift the chest and then simply fold forward as far as feels comfortable for now. You might feel a little bit tight. Close your eyes, allow your head, crown of the head to be facing towards the toes of that extended leg. Take another breath here. Inhale, gaze back up, slowly incurl yourself back up. Take the knee in and extend it and we'll change to the other side. So bringing the left knee in, opening the left knee out, maybe use a brick, maybe not. 
you take the other hand underneath your right buttock as you shift your weight down to the left so that you can literally take the flesh away so that you can feel the sitting bone resting down. Lift the chest, inhale, and then as you exhale, bring yourself forward and down. And take a few breaths here. Only ever going as far as you feel is comfortable. This is just a little gentle, nice stretch. Gentle, it depends who you are, of course, because some postures are more comfortable for some bodies than other bodies. Inhale, gazing back up towards the toes. Exhale, slowly and curling yourself back up. Bring the left knee up and extend it. You're going to um, extend both legs and take the flesh from underneath the buttocks. You can inhale and lift the arms up, or if your back feels a, a little tight still, hands to the side of the body and you're going to hinge forward Release the hands to wherever they want to be, whether that's on the floor, on the legs. Try not to overreach for the sake of holding onto your toes. And take two to three more breaths here. Gaze back up slowly and curl yourself. This time you're going to scoop your bottom towards your heels. Release yourself down. And then take a, a gentle twist, taking the arms out to the side. To shoulder height, doing cactus arms as I am here. Knees over towards the right. You feel free to move up or down with the legs and then take the gaze over to the other side. Nose back to the centre, knees back through towards the centre. Recenter yourself before you move over to the other side where the knees go over towards the left and the gaze goes over to the right. Nose back through to the centre, knees back through towards the centre. Hug the knees in towards the chest. It might be quite nice here to have your, your books or your bricks or a little bit of support underneath your feet. So when you come down for Shavasana, then your legs are a little bit lifted. And here we have a few more breaths. You may want to stay longer or move on to one of the relaxation or perhaps a meditation to carry yourself through to the rest of the evening or perhaps to your bedtime. Namaste.